in just a second. Good to see everybody. What is today? No, Friday, November 5th, 2021. I'm John Lee, St. Louis Real Estate Investors Association, and we're here this morning with uh, Miss Kathy Davis for our monthly update, which we're really happy to have her. So welcome, everybody. Yes. Lloyd, would you like to say anything before we get started? Uh, no, I don't have anything uh, till uh, I don't want to keep uh, Kathy take any more of her time. So we, we can talk about our uh, announcements and stuff when she when she's done. So let's hear. Her. We're anxious to hear from you. I haven't haven't heard from you over over a month now. So yeah, hi. I hope everyone's doing all right. Um, we uh, we continue to make what we think are huge strides of progress. Um, the county presiding judge, we heard yesterday that everything is going to be back in person starting January 1st. Um, I'm not really sure what's going to go on in the city yet, but they're already doing kind of blended dockets. Chris goes down and appears in person, and I stay here in the office and take care of anybody who shows up online. And we've been getting stuff done for that. The big thing at this time of year is kind of just like any other year, only maybe a little more so because they are not going to do any evictions, any set outs for the last two weeks of November or the last two weeks of December. Um, we have heard that the city, which we, from our perspective, seems to be doing better in giving out the emergency rent relief. We've heard that they're running out of money. Hmm. I had thought that at some point they were gonna get another grant, but I don't know that for sure. The county is continuing to be, um, the skunk in the wood pile with their crazy requirements and their slowness in dispersing and that kind of thing. And of course, there's a lot of tenants who wait until the last minute to apply and, and what have you. Um, I think most of our landlords who are willing to accept the assistance have been able to went through the process. We have definitely done things that we've never done in the past pre pre COVID about continuing cases and that kind of thing to allow time for the rental assistance to come. Some of our clients have gotten some very big, nice checks and you know, we're happy for that. Um, but you know, as with anything, all good things are gonna come to an end. Um, and it seems to be working in good sync right now with the restrictions in the courts loosening as the COVID dies down and the ERAP runs out of money and you know, that kind of thing. I have also heard that the state program safer is much easier to work with and to get money from and that kind of thing. Um, and I can tell you that personally, the calls that I get are about ERAP. I've not gotten a call about safer asking for things to be straightened up. Um, so that's kind of all I know right now. I started a jury trial at the end of September, but we settled it midway. So I'm hoping that some of my other jury trial cases will get reached. Um, I don't know what else I got. Anybody got any questions? Do you know how long that process is taking from the time of application to seeing some money? You know, I think it potentially can take a long time. Again, it might depend on what program you're going through. I think the, the SAFER and the city ERAP are working faster than the county, but um, um, you know, weeks, maybe months. I don't know. I looked the other day on the county ERAP site and they had a new field since the last time I'd looked when it had all this long list of requirements that they, they want people to, to give. And I've heard ridiculous things like they've made employees of um, landlord companies give their driver's licenses and, you know, that kind of thing, which sounds ridiculous to me because they're not getting the money. Um, they, I had a tenant tell me that they told her that she had an out-of-state driver's license and that she was gonna to have to get a Missouri driver's license before they approved her, which I thought was insane. Um, you know, if she had other evidence that she lived here in a lease and, you know, a ledger and confirmation from the landlord, why, why is that a requirement? I'm sure there's a lot of people who didn't wanna go take a driving test during COVID or, you know, do whatever you have to do to get your new driver's license. Um, I think the Department of Revenue is offering those now, but I'm not even 100% sure about that. Um, and someone just put in the chat to ask Chris to call them. Hey, Chris, 
He just got back from court in St. Charles. He's gone. Oh, he is? Yeah. He's, he's going to go. Oh, oh okay. Okay, um, Heather tells me that Chris was just here back from St. Charles, but he left again because he had to run home. His baby, my little granddaughter, Lila, has been having a stomach bug, and I think there's a lot of diapers. So um, <laughs> my daughter probably needed some relief. So tell Chris to check his email. Okay. And if it's Will anything say, that yeah, Heather or I can help you with, let me know. Okay. Is St. Charles uh, still all pretty wide open as no Saint, normal, like you said? Yeah, that doesn't appear to be COVID in St. Charles. I was <laughs> I was there on Monday. They don't even screen going into the courthouse anymore. You wow. know, there's no masks. There are people who are wearing masks, but you don't have to. And um, we were in court with, I wouldn't consider it to be a huge amount of people. It was circuit court, but it was, you know, 15 or 20 people in a big courtroom. And there was no... Uh, didn't seem to be any worries by anybody about what we were doing. Okay. Um, Jefferson is the same thing. Someone says, I can't imagine how busy we are. We are busy. Um, I don't, I still don't think we're seeing the tsunami of evictions that people were talking about, but it has picked up a little bit. And we do have that thing that always happens at this time of year, as I said, where we have less court dates going through the holidays just because, you know, we're not, I haven't persuaded them yet to have court on Christmas and Thanksgiving. And, um, you know, the sheriffs have always kind of shut down the evictions the last week or two of the year, and they're doing it apparently at Thanksgiving this year too. So we have a huge dockets where everything's crammed into one day. Um, if you have uh, evictions that you want us to do or your lawyer or yourself, you might want to get them on file pretty quick because we're rapidly getting to the end of our December court dates and then you wouldn't get a court date until January. So if you have someone on your on the that you're on the fence about you might want to pull the trigger. We have been continuing to do deals that we wouldn't do in normal times allowing people more time to move and um, more time to get their rental assistance act together and that kind of thing. We believe um, that if we, if the person has a judgment against them that the rental assistance will act more quickly. And some people have, some tenants have kind of wanted that because they wanted to get to the top of the list. But we have been giving generous timeframes like a month to either move or get the money paid or get their pay plan in place, you know, that kind of thing. Whereas ordinarily we would, we would you know, give 10 days, maybe two weeks. Right now, um, I don't have another court date in the county for docket until December 2nd. And we have a bunch of trials scheduled on November 18th. So when I had when we had docket yesterday, we were giving people until the end of the month because if we set them for trial, the soonest date would be November 18th. And then with the 10 days and the Thanksgiving stay and that kind of thing, it would be the end of the month anyway. So it's easier just to get the judgment in place and be done than to worry about setting it for trial and having something else happen or you know, whatever not get reached on the trial date. That hasn't happened yet because Christine and I go in and settle everything, but it could happen. In the city, our judge, Judge Higgins, who's a very nice man, is really fed up with the remote appearances. We haven't heard from the city presiding judge about what he's gonna do, but we think that just by operation, they're gonna be doing more court appearances. Judge Higgins is ordering people to appear in person for their second court date if they're remote. Uh, anybody got anything else? Hardly anybody has their video on, so <laughs> I can't tell uh, if you're happy or not, but I hope you're all great. Um, I'll come back on the first Friday of December if you want me to. And I hope you all have lovely Thanksgivings. Oh, in the city, we had an eviction. Yeah, once the eviction notice, once we have the judgment and we file the execution and the sheriff posts the eviction, they give the tenant, usually it's five business days to move out before the sheriff will come and put them out. The problem is that in the city and the county, they're gonna stop posting those notices 
for two weeks at the end of November and two weeks at the end of December. So that's going to suck up some time. Okay, great to see everybody or not Kathy, see you. Though. Yeah. Kathy, I'm sorry I getting on late here. I, um, I have a couple questions. It's the same scenario, but I have two cases. Mm -hmm. I recently sold my buildings. And it, when the title company, when we closed, the title company made me pay the rents. Uh, they prorated them. And so I had to pay tenants rents ahead of time. And I was expecting to get paid from the tenant. I sent them a notice stating that they need to pay me the rent. Well, one hasn't. And I went to the courthouse and I tried to file um, just for rent. Mm -hmm. And they said I couldn't, um, small claims wouldn't take it and associate circuit wouldn't take it. Why? Because I'm no longer the owner that I can't ask for rent is what they told me. No, you should be able to do that. That's, that's damages that are coming to you because you got that, you got prorated on your closing statement and you should be able to collect that. You should be able to file what they call a rent and damages petition. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and I would suggest that anybody that's, you know, selling a property where you're doing this proration, that you work something out with um, the new purchaser, um, maybe instead of prorating the rent, assign those rents to them so that you don't have to give them that credit. Okay. Okay. And the other one is under the ERAP for five months and I thought they'd pay me and now they won't even talk to me since I'm not the owner. Well, you should be able to sue them on that too. Sue the tenant. Yeah, yeah. For non-payment. Yeah, because that's money owed to you. And that's still an associate circuit. Or small claims if it's less than 5,000. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay, yeah, they said they would just be taking my money and that those were the, those courts wouldn't accept it. The yeah, judge wouldn't hear it. Huh. They're wrong. And right. the judge will hear it. And if you go back over to small claims, call me when you're there if they say that, and I'll be happy to talk to them or tell them Kathy Davis said you could do this. Uh -huh. All right. I'm going to use your name. Okay. And someone in the chat wants to know the statute of limitations. It's kind of interesting. It's We believe it's 10 years on contract, but there was a recent court of appeals case that struck down a, a landlord judgment that that was post-possession, but it was for rent and damages. And so we think we now have a split statute where damages can only be sued for for five years and contractual amounts for 10. We're still kind of in the process of trying to figure that out. But why don't you assume that you wanna get it done within five years if possible? Okay, and Amber has a question. Issued a notice to quit. Your tenants on. It might be easier quitting. if I just state it. Sorry. Okay. No, no, um, no problem. <laughs> yeah. So my tenant is um, older, and I just issued a notice to quit. She is month to month, and curious to know if it's possible to. I, I assume I'm affected into my number. She's not probably going to pay for November. I'm assuming December as well. And then you know, once I go through the eviction process, if I have to, um, can I recoup? that lost rent because she's older and on social security or is that just a wash just let it go you can ask for it the problem with it is if her only assets and income are social security you're not going to be able to garnish her bank account or garnish the social security or that kind of stuff that stuff is all exempt from any kind of garnishment or collection efforts and where is your property is it city or county city you might want to call chris um maybe later this afternoon and run your notice of eviction, notice of termination pat, past him and make sure that it was proper. Okay, yep. Okay. Actually I did beforehand. And he, okay, good. Yeah. Well, you Thank be you. Good. Okay. okay, I'm gonna see you next month. Have a great Thanksgiving, everybody. Hey. Lovely to Thank see you, you Kathy. All. Thank Thanks. you, Thank you, Kathy. Thanks Take for care. having me. Thanks.